Working with the Town of Southampton in close partnership with the Parks and Recreation Department, we have created a place for learning and stewardship at Tyana Bayside facility on Dune Road in Hampton Bays. This waterfront location is an ideal place for us to deliver hands-on, science-based programming to the community. On site, we have a coastal plant nursery where we are growing native species that will be utilized in our many habitat restoration projects. This site also serves as a satellite location for our SPAT program, offering participants an opportunity to grow their own shellfish for their enjoyment and in support of the health of our local waters. We caught up with SPAT director Kim Tetro and some of his SPAT members. Yeah, so we're at the Tyana, uh, what I call the Tyana Oyster Garden Annex of Cornell Marine Program, the SPAT program, Suffolk Project in Aquaculture Training. And what happens is that a lot of people that want to grow oysters don't have waterfront property, so where do they get to grow? The town of Southampton trustees and the town board gave us this awesome place to set up yet another community garden annex. We have a lot of growers, we have 80 lines out here. We started about eight years ago and it's just been fabulous. The people come out, everyone gets a thousand oysters to grow. They learn a lot about uh, what it takes to grow oysters. We now have the, the, the education facility where we're running lectures and teaching them more in a classroom setting at night. Here we just come out, we have fun, we show people how to, how to be oyster gardeners. How long have you been a SPAT member for? Today. <laughs> Today, awesome. Um, my parents started coming. My mom came out here in January um, and started coming to some of the lectures, but today's my first day. Awesome. Well, I've, I've heard of other people, you know, starting oyster, you know, oyster farming, and um, I've been a contractor for the past almost 20 years here on the island, and um, I, I've really invo been involved in anything on the water so I, through the through the recreation program I saw the oyster farming program and I decided you know maybe this is uh, something that I really want to pursue and uh, and look look into further so I signed up and, and here I am starting to uh, grow my own oysters. In the classroom space inside the facility we are able to conduct a variety of programming tailored to those aged 15 months through adult. Okay so an oyster is the same as these animals they're all like cousins all right, so they have two hearts. Our Bay Buddies early education programs are designed for children aged three to five years and help foster environmental stewardship and an appreciation for our marine environment at an early age. Rachel Neville is the lead educator at this facility who conducts these and many other programs on site. So this is our second season operating out of our Tiana Bayside facility. Uh, we've been doing a lot of different youth education programs ranging from free marine exploration programs, free kayaking, eco tours. Uh, we also have done some Bay Babies and Bay Buddies programs aimed at young future marine stewards. It's been a great opportunity for us to reach some new people, kind of expand our, our range here on the South Fork, um, get a lot of new kids to experience marine science firsthand. So it's been a pretty neat opportunity. Integrative art and science curriculum offers another way for the public to learn about our marine environment. Another way we are integrating art and science is through our collaboration with artist Cindy Pizarro. She created a sculpture, The Wishing Whale, utilizing reclaimed gear recovered from our derelict lobster trap removal project. The sculpture has found a permanent home at our facility. Uh, the Wishing Whale was such a fun piece to make because a uh, long time ago, Chris Pickrell of Cornell showed me one of these lobster traps. He explained to me about the derelict lobster traps in Long Island Sound, and he said, hey, is there something you think, you know, hey, just take a look at it and see if there's something that, you know, it might inspire you. So I took one back to my studio. It sat here for six months. I would walk in and out of the studio and look at it every day. And then Southampton Arts Center reached out to me and was interested in doing a community-based large sculpture and we started having this discussion and it dawned on me that the lobster traps could possibly be used as the armature for the framework. So that's really how it all came off. Being able to put wishes in little miniature liquor bottles is like such a fun thing that community members can do. So you can go and find a little miniature liquor bottle, they're all over the beach, sorry to say. Put your wish in it, any wish is fine, it's okay. You don't have to, we don't monitor the wishes. And if you go underneath the tail, there's a little hole. You actually can pop it up and it'll go and it'll slide down into the tail. As you go underneath the tail, you can actually see 
lots of wishes and lots of bottles in there, and that's why it's called the Wishing Wheel. Of course, you can guess what my wish is. It's for a cleaner ocean. So all the programs that we have coming up are featured on our website, ccesuffolk.org. They're also on the kiosk behind me. Get some up-to-date information on there. And in addition, our programs are listed with the Southampton Town Parks and Rec website, so you can find all that information on there as well.